quite often that I'll take a journey, set off, and then just have to immediately turn back. This is something I've never had to do before. First obstacle. Right, first obstacle is I'm on a corner and there's loads of ice to the left of me. If I don't move today, there's a storm coming and I've run out of water from my water tank, so I've got to try it. Come on. Sorry, this is an absolute nightmare. I'm just going to have to just push off at the front. There's a whole boatyard full of boats as well. What am I doing? from that boat at least. I've got all of that to get through. All right, let's try again. Thick eyes. Look at it. Right, well, I've abandoned that idea. I'm actually going backwards now because the ice is too thick. It's melting, but it's just too thick to get through. And there's so many boats here is possibly going to end up damaging them as well. With my experience in travelling through ice, which is quite a lot, this is why I won't make a video today to show you what it's like. That is too thick. I'll just have to try again when the storm has passed. Because that's my other obstacle, wind. Very difficult. When it's 50 mile an hour wind, it's difficult to control a boat like this, which obviously has a flat bottom. Oh well, back to the drawing board. This is take two, it's windy, it's wet. I'm in between storms basically, the way it's gonna go up to force nine, about 50, 40 to 50 miles an hour winds. But yeah, if I don't move right now, again, I'm gonna get stuck. I actually had to go and stay away with my, with my family <laughs> um, for the last few days. That's how bad it's been, weather, weather wise. You can see my glasses are absolutely just, yeah get spattered already but we're making a lot better distance already than we were in the ice got two locks today and two miles so it's a short distance but yeah as you can see it's not nice weather to travel around in I mean it's already 20 miles an hour wind that's too much for most boaters. It just makes everything a lot longer. 
especially when you're trying more up on your own, tying up in a lock, all that sort of stuff. It's just a bit, a bit tricky. Despite the weather, it does feel amazing to be on the move again. And it's, yeah, it goes without saying, but it's a lot quicker <laughs> without all the ice in the way. We've got a rare stretch of the Grand Union without any boats on, so let's crank it. Right, here's the first lock of the day. Can't wait to get stuck into this one. So this is lock number 37 and number 38. Marsworth, two locks. So they're both together, one after the other. It's the best way. Uh, looks like the lock has got some water in it. It's leaking very, very badly. There shouldn't be that much water coming through, but it's what happens on these old locks. So I need to let a bit of water out. Right, it's about this time 
that I could just walk up to the next lock and prepare that. It's full, um, but being this is quite a busy canal, I'm just going to take my time, get myself up in this lock first, which is the safest thing to do anyway, and um, wait, see if any other boats are coming. Because if I was a boater, I'd be moving today. I am a boater, I am moving today. So that's nonsense. Uh, <laughs> stop, stop some of the stuff that I say. <laughs> I watch it back and think, what are you talking about? top lock here it's got a lovely little lock keepers cottage next to it quite remote because there's no roads that I can see around there must be some kind of track but um, look at this lock gates again leaking all over the place really bad yeah it is quite difficult for me some of these are so heavy and so backed up with water pressure behind them from the leaky lock gates I just, I just don't understand how, how people can do this, um, especially if they're of a certain age, which are a lot of boaters. That is a lot of boaters who are retired, working their way around the system. I've met a lot of them in the Midlands and in the North. I guess that's why they have more than one person on board, a bit of a crew, because <laughs> you do need two people to open this lock, I would say. there but the wind is starting to pick up a little bit and the weather yeah it's not nice not a good day <laughs> right that's it I'm leaving the last lot now wasn't particularly enjoyable but another boat has just come along saying I'm coming this way, leave the gates open, so that is perfect because although I love doing the locks, it's just not one of those days where I want to be spending hours walking up and down, shutting the gates. It's arguably the most boring part is shutting the gates. <laughs> no one likes doing it. Well, I haven't got my glasses on because it is raining so much, it's just going to get all over the lenses. But I'm almost at my destination. It's just about a mile around the corner. And then I'm there. I can fill up with water and more up and then go to the pub. Yeah, that's happening. on this bridge is where I can fill up my water tank which is almost completely empty. That's quite 
quite easy to overshoot that. <laughs> Almost completely missed it. It's right next to these uh, private residences. Look very posh. Right, time to reverse. Before we head out to Pub of the Week, I just wanted to thank a few people that are supporting me throughout my time making videos and not making videos. Uh, it's the Crank It crew, uh, new members this time are Claire and Paul Bell, who are producers of the vlog, and Captain Casey Wheeler. So crank you very much for your support. <laughs> Right, well, it's getting dark now. Spent a lot of the day working, then I got a nice shower in. But anyway, I can smell a pub. Our first stop, just up there, the Red Lion. Just on the bridge, walking up, there's a checkered pattern. I love that, I think it's just to warn cars that it's there, but I do like that a lot. Right, our first stop is the Red Lion in Marsworth and this is a great place, especially if you're a dog owner because there's plenty of them in here. Uh, some great beers and a little bit of canal wear on the side, always good to see. Right, this is the next pub of the week, the Angler's Retreat. Now this place really should be called the Aviculturalist's Arms because They've got an aviary outside, and also inside, there's a little pet parrot called Harvey. <laughs> this is a classic feature of an old pub. Outdoor toilets for the gents. And whilst I was outside, I could see what the wind was doing. It was blowing up a bit of a gale, so yeah, no one was outside in the marquee. Back inside the pub, everyone's staying cosy and having a good old laugh at the bar and if we just peer over the taps of beer here we can see Harvey in the corner whistling a little bit to himself or maybe he's trying to tell us something maybe he's saying he's hungry this is one of the locals feeding him a peanut if you're really lucky he jumps on your shoulder so you can act like a real pirate but he didn't want to do it for me he was still a bit shy and maybe he preferred playing this game <laughs> <laughs> and that's it from Harvey and from Pub of the Week. Hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers! Cheers, Robbie. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. I feel like I'm on Saturday brunch. Cheers, Tim. Cheers, Simon. Or Sunday brunch, whatever it is. That's a different channel. Yeah.